Hello everyone and welcome to or back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Emily and I live in London and I recently graduated with my master's degree in web design and content planning from the University of Greenwich. So today I thought I would share with you my entire experience at the University of Greenwich from application to graduation and everything in between. While I think this video will probably be helpful for anyone considering Greenwich, I think it will be particularly helpful for those of you that are international students because that is the experience that I have had and I'm going to share with you. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was why I chose Greenwich and there are three main reasons and they are first the program that is at Greenwich for web design is a mix of artistic and technical so you get to learn coding as well as design so it's kind of the best of both worlds you learn a new well I had never coded before so that's something that I was like a little intimidated by but it's also about design and user experience and all that kind of stuff so I thought with a lot of other programs, it was one or the other, and this one really had a good blend. I also liked that it was in a quieter area of London because I am not from a huge city, so I thought maybe being in central London would be a little bit overwhelming. Um, and this is something I will talk about more in, later in the video about the location of Greenwich and all that kind of stuff, but um, it was close enough to central London, but it wasn't like smack dab in the middle. And then also they had postgraduate accommodation, which is a big thing because I had no idea what I was doing with renting in London. And if you watch my flat hunting video, you'll know it is a crazy thing here. It's like, it's, it, it's insane. So I'm really glad that they had accommodation that I could just go to. And then after that, um, my lease ended there, I was able to move into a flat, but it was a really good stepping stone, I thought. And two of my flatmates ended up being my best friends here in London and we live together now, so I definitely do recommend living in the accommodation because it gives you an opportunity to bond with your fellow students because I feel like if you just go to class or go to campus for classes and then go back to your flat, it's kind of harder to kind of get in invested in things. Okay, so now moving on to my experience with the University of Greenwich itself. So I'll start with kind of moving in and that kind of time period and then I'll move into my program and just kind of, you know, I'll, I'll touch on everything. And then I also actually I forgot I have some questions that people sent me on Instagram. Um, shameless plug for my Instagram if you want to follow it. Um, and so I'll answer some of those as well. So the first thing I wanted to say is that Greenwich actually has three campuses. The first one is the main campus in Greenwich, and there's also a Bedway campus and an Avery Hill campus, and depending on your program, you'll be placed at one of those. My campus was the main campus, so that's the one that I will be talking about. About the location in Greenwich, I am obsessed with Greenwich. You will probably have gathered this if you follow me, but I love Greenwich so much. There are some pros and cons, though, so I will talk about those. The first pro is that it's actually absolutely beautiful like the buildings the architecture there's a lot of history in Greenwich and there's a park that is just like amazing for walks in the morning um there's a lot of cafes it's really a cool place um the downside of that is a lot of people want to go to Greenwich on the weekends so it gets really really busy and like if you're trying to go do your shopping on the weekends and that kind of stuff it gets really frustrating to have to like dodge in and out of crowds and another thing is that like I mentioned it's not in central central London it's in zone two um so it's right across the river from Canary Wharf if you're familiar with that and I I think the location is good it's just that if you're wanting that like city experience it's it feels a little bit isolated from that it's more of like a village vibe and less of like a big city vibe you definitely have the option to go into the city and get the city vibes but that's not going to be like you're stepping out every day into like the streets of happen in London. If you follow people that go to like LSE or UCL, those kind of campuses are more in central London. There are definitely pros and cons of this because I personally feel like Greenwich has a more like university campus experience. It's definitely not one that's like a closed campus so like everyone that you meet is going to the university but it's also not like you know dispersed throughout London so you're just like kind of in the city not really feeling like you're having like a campus experience. So moving in was kind of like a whirlwind because they don't really provide that much stuff in your dorm room like you have a bed and a desk but there's no toilet paper there's no like bedding nothing so you immediately have to go out and get stuff um some of my flatmates actually like bound together and did that but I was like so jet lagged I just immediately went when I got there so I could just get all my stuff and then go to sleep so yeah the first couple of weeks we were just kind of like 
managing and we like my flatmates and I we ended up going to Ikea together and then we, from there we kind of bonded and we went to events together. There are a lot of like freshers events the first week. A lot of them do seem geared towards like actual like undergrad freshmen coming in that are just like 18 years old and just getting into university um, but you are also allowed to attend as like a freshman master student. It's kind of weird because I felt, I personally felt a little bit old, but I just stuck with my friends that were master students that I made from the halls and we kind of just like met people together. And we actually went to one event that was like a snow sports committee event. I have no interest in snow sports, but my friends did. So I went and we actually met one of our best friends there. So I do suggest going to the events. Just know that it's kind of more geared towards like the younger group of students. Okay, so now onto my program. So if you are interested in the masters in web design and content planning, this part is for you and I have a lot to say. So first of all, I'll talk about the structure of the course. So basically there are two instructors and one of them is the more design side of things and then the other one is more like the coding side of things. So you learn both kind of at the same time and the way that the course is structured is that we have class once a week. I think for me it was every Wednesday from 11 to 6 and we had an hour break for lunch in the middle of that so it's really nice actually because you only have to go to class once a week but you do have things that will keep you busy throughout the rest of the week but basically David who is the more like coding side of things will teach the morning session and then typically Priska who is the more artistic side of things will teach the afternoon session so you get both each week and then you kind of meld the two together that week to work on your assignments and projects. So it's definitely a very intuitive way of learning and I feel like I learned way faster than I ever thought I could. And the instructors are actually very invested. So they're not just gonna show up to class, teach and get out of there. They are very much involved. And even to the point where we would all go to the pub after class and they would come and we would all just hang out and talk for like hours after class. And they're also available like all the time, not all the time, like respectfully <laughs> of their hours but like anytime you have a problem you can just message them on slack and they are more than willing to help my favorite thing about the course and the thing that i think sets it, sets it apart the most is that it's not really an academic course so it is because it's a master's but it's so hands-on so you don't just sit in class and learn something and then write a paper about it you sit in class you do activities throughout the class and then you go home and you apply what you've learned to assignments so you build websites from scratch, you do like JavaScript code, um, you learn WordPress and like all these things that are hands on that you can't just learn by hearing about them, you actually have to do them. There are opportunities to do them and that is personally like I that's why I feel like I learned so much more than I thought I would on the course because there was no other option like you have to learn how to do it because you're actually physically doing it. Also while this course is only once a week it is full time and you will have stuff to do the first couple weeks you kind of feel like okay this is easy i can just go to class once a week work on something for like one or two days and then be fine towards the middle and end of the course you're working every single day like even though you're not going into class you're going to be working on your websites so um that brings me to the topic of work so actually someone on instagram says um have you been able to work part-time or intern somewhere? And the answer is a little bit complicated. So technically, yes, I got a job as a student ambassador at the University of Greenwich. So I did work on campus, but I was able to choose when I picked up shifts. And this is something that I would definitely recommend if you are going to Greenwich because it's so flexible. Um, I don't think if I got a different part-time job, it would have been as flexible as that and there were some weeks that there was just no way I could have done extra work. That being said, you do have the option on the student visa to work up to 20 hours a week. So um, yeah, just that's up to you and your program. So the way that masters work in the UK is that you have a teaching term and then you also have a self-study term, which in my case meant that time I wasn't going to class. I was just working on my major project, which was my major website for the end of the course my like capstone project. Um, I was also at the time like traveling and working on YouTube and that kind of stuff. So it's possible that I could have done an internship during that time. Um, but as an international student who has never had the opportunity to be able to travel Europe this freely, I did want to kind of leave that 
opportunity available to myself. And then I actually wanted to individually address these two questions that I got on Instagram. So the first is that, have you found community slash things to be involved in? And I touched on this, but I definitely think that making friends with people on your halls if you live on campus is a great way to make friends, which is another reason I'm so, um, like, not adamant about it, but I really think it's a good idea to live on campus. The other thing is um, making friends in your course. So it would have been very easy, and a lot of times I did not go to the pub after class because I was so tired, but it would have been easy to just never go and never try and make friends with the people in my course. But I feel like that would have been such a loss. First of all, I've made really good friends and I like the people in my course, but also it's a really good networking opportunity. If one of your classmates that you're friends with succeeds and they have an opportunity in the future for you to, you know, maybe work with them or have some sort of like in with a company, it cannot hurt. So definitely make friends with people in your course and with your tutors and people that they know in the industry. So yeah. That's about making friends and then things to be involved in. As I mentioned, most of the activities I think were geared more towards like the younger crowd on campus. That does not mean you can't go. Like there was a self-defense class on campus that I went to. Um, there's like a campus bar, which is so weird as an American because like it's just, it's just weird. But it's really cool because you can go and like meet people there. And then someone asked if I was able to travel a lot outside of class. And yes, kind of like, I was very much focused on my studies and I also love London. I want to explore London. So um, there's definitely the opportunity to travel. And I think I did a lot more when I was during my self-study period because I was able to kind of, if I needed to, I could work more one week and then go travel another week. So there's definitely the opportunity and London is such a great place to be if you do want to travel. Okay, so what's next? So if you are an international student who goes to Greenwich, or actually I think any university that is accredited by the UKVI, you can apply for a graduate visa. So that allows you to stay for two extra years after you graduate without a sponsorship for your visa. So basically that means you can um, work for companies or for yourself and you don't have to get a company to pay for your visa. They also are aware that you are gonna need a visa in two years. So um, some companies are not as willing to do that. Um, my program at least, they definitely have contacts in the industry, so, um, that's a good networking opportunity, um, and there is an employability office at Greenwich, however, it's tough to get a job in London, especially as an international, and as someone who, like, I have professional experience, I used to work in a different field, but I don't have professional experience in the web design field, so, I think perhaps getting an internship would have been a really good idea because then I would have had a foot in the door. I just wanted to say that because I feel like we need to be realistic about these kinds of things. Okay, so that's it. If you guys have any questions about Greenwich, I will try and answer them. You can leave them down below. You can also message me on Instagram, which is here, and follow me on TikTok. And I think that's all the places I am. And also, I have a lot of vlogs about Greenwich and London, so I'll link those in the cards now, as well as in the description below. I'll link like everything that I think would possibly be relevant to this video. So, okay, I think that's everything I needed to say. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!